a very good morning to all of you in this class we will be beginning with a new poem named crossing the bar by alfred lord tennyson alfred lord tennyson was a gifted poet in the victorian era uh, who often delved into the eternal human questions and provide solace and inspiration to his readers this poem uh, crossing the bar was written in the year 1889 3 years before he died so this poem shows his um, placid and accepting attitude toward death this poem immediately you know acquires uh, popularity after it released and it was given music and it was one of the anthems uh, that is sung in the funeral of tennyson in westminster abbey and it was actually a poem of th uh, thanksgiving and uh, at tennyson's request this poem was included as last poem in all his editions of his poetry here we will see an unspecified ship is ready to sail its journey at the sunset the poet is ready to be on the ship and he wants to go where the ship leads him to right he does not want anyone mourning at his last journey actually here he is talking about his death he wants the tide to be its in its full form but he does not want it to make any moan or to make any foam so he wants a cheerful departure and a farewell without sadness he is willing to meet the pilot at the end of his journey and he is willing to live there in the world that he will achieve after his death crossing the bar uh, actually consists of four stanzas and they all are quatrains this is written in a ballad verse way and uh, the classical rhyming pattern that is a b a b is maintained throughout the poem crossing the bar bar here signifies sand bar sand bar is what it is often built at the mouth of the river or the harbor and it often differentiates the uh, sea from the harbor so here the poet uh, is showing he is representing the metaphorical image of death which he will find after crossing the bar after crossing the sand bar so the bar is there present between the life and death so after leaving his life he is all set to go forward to his later on journey that is death and he is willing and very happily um, going to accept that which he will have after crossing the bar okay so let us begin with the poem sunset and evening star so we can see these are metaphorical images sunset and evening star this um, can uh, represent the end of a day as the poet comes to the end of his life so these are the uh, metaphorical imagery that he is using to show the condition that is uh, that he is going through and uh, he goes on describing the atmosphere that is the atmosphere of his life okay that sunset and the evening star right so there is an unspecified ship which is waiting for the poet to come over it and to set forth a journey towards a new life and one clear call for me and after one formal announcement what is one clear call the clear call is here the last summon to death right and he is ready for his 
last call. He heard the last call, and the ship is waiting across the harbor, okay, to go for the journey into the sea. And may there be no moaning of the bar. Now, now the speaker here hopes for a gentle departure. He does not want the bar to moan. Here the bar is being personified because how can a bar moan? But by using this moan, he is personifying the uh, word bar. So he wants no one to moan. Rather, he wants a cheerful and happy farewell. When I put out to sea, when, when he is ready to start his journey into the sea. Now here the bar, uh, the bar generally uh, stands uh, between uh, the um, inner water and the water outside. The water inside, that is the river water, by referring this, the poet is mentioning his life that he is enjoying right now and the water beyond, that is the sea water, that that, that is the life that he is going to enjoy after death. Okay? But such a tide moving seems asleep. Here the poet wishes when he puts out to sea. That is when he will die. Let it be uh, like a ride that seems asleep without making any movement. He wants his death to be a smooth journey and too full for sound and foam. Like a calm sea, the waves should be very calm and quiet. And which is too full for sound and foam, which are unable to make sound or foam. The speaker hopes that his death will be silent, smoothless, quick and without making any fuss. When that which drew from but the boundless deep. Here the poet uses the cycle of death and life. He is talking about the, um, you know, the water of the sea which evaporates with the help of the heat and makes cloud and from the cloud often produces rain and the rain falls into the river and the river enters the sea and again the water evaporates. So you can see there is a cycle of life and death. Here the boundless deep stands apparently for the sea which is an allegorical image to the place turns again home the poet believes that where he will go after death so while he will go for his last ride he wants no fuss he wants no one mourning he does not want the sea to make moaning sound or foam rather he wants to be complete smooth one right and he is using the allegorical image of sea that he is going to hate very soon. The third stanza, Twilight and Evening Bell. So you will see the atmosphere is getting changed from sunset to twilight. Twilight is a faint light after the sunset which is hinting that the time is passing on. Twilight and evening bell. In the twilight, the poet hears the rings of the evening bell. It is suggestive of the death knell, which is generally rung when a person has died. And after the dark, so then after a while, it will get dark. It will be night. So it is hinting the poet's impending death and his advanced age. And may there be no sadness of farewell. Sensing the end, 
he is urging everyone i do not want any type of sadness in the farewell i want a cheerful departure rather when i embark when i embark when he will embark for a new journey he to the poet death is not the final destination rather it is a new beginning of a new journey for through form out our bond of time and place so in the final stanza the poet points out the significance of his journey he is confident that after crossing the bar which separates the harbor and the sea his journey will lead him beyond the time and place the flood may bear me far the flood of death will carry him far away i hope to see my pilot face to face so this is a place beyond time and place which will uh, lead him to the place where he will come face to face with the pilot by capitalizing the alphabet p he is referring the god here by pilot when i have crossed the bar here the speaker wishes to see the pilot after he has just crossed the bar tennison himself has identify the pilot had been uh, abroad all along and he remained unseen and always present there as a divine uh, power to guide them uh, guide all the human being god is here in guise of a qualified mariner who will steer the ship and uh, take the poet uh, you know through throughout the troubled water and safely he will make him reach to the destination where he will have his new life that after death only is possible to achieve we will read the poem only in this class in the next class we will be discussing the uh, figures of speech and its themes so this is not uh, a very difficult poem to decipher rather quite an easy one just you keep in mind the background of writing this poem before you proceed on reading and um, you will get the material there hopefully you will have no difficulty even if you have just feel free to mention so we will meet in the next class with uh, discussing the rest part of the poem and till then do study well take care of yourself have a great day thank you